Alright, so I'm actually on the Amtrak right now back to Virginia, but I just wanted to state this real quick before the video started. First of all, if you haven't already seen it, it's a lengthy video, um, so just remember that as you're watching, it's okay to take breaks, you know, watch the first 15, 20, however long your attention span can go watch that long and then you know you pause it uh go live life and then just come back to it later you know uh if you can sit down and watch netflix for that long you know what i mean like about 50 minutes is not like too bad i guess um also i want to apologize in advance for the audio we recorded it outside and so and david talks really low so sometimes like i had to like adjust the audio a little bit i'm still figuring out all of the technical stuff like that but um another news yeah just uh hope that you enjoy and it kind of we kind of just jump right into it um we lost the first part of the video where we like gave the introduction or whatever but i guess this is what's serving for that so yeah i hope that y'all enjoy the video make sure you leave comments all of that and yeah let's start so due to our different function stacks um although we have the same functions they're in like different positions so I may be struggling some, with something that he might not struggle with and vice versa. So there's going to be some things where both NFJs deal with when come when being a guy. And there's going to be some things where it's like, oh, he struggles with that, but I don't really struggle with that or I struggle with it and he doesn't really struggle with it. And this mainly, I would say this mainly comes up with like the NI and TI. Uh, a little bit with FE, but... FE, yeah. Yeah, that is, <laughs> I guess everything then. <laughs> everything but SE. Yeah. But yeah, let's get started. So I guess one difference would be the fact that I could never really approach girls. And that's a huge thing, actually. I've grown up, grown up especially around the Bronx, that, that's something guys do a lot around here. Mm. Or at least in New York City in general. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's something that guys do all the time. So I felt like uh, my inability to talk to girls just on the fly and just figure out what I have to say, it just didn't come naturally to me. That's something that I really struggled with because I, I would, I would imagine the whole scenario, but then I would also understand that it was kind of unrealistic simply because I would see how it could have went and one result that it, I would have ended up with. However, if I were to actually implement that whole uh, strategy, I doubt it would go exactly how I thought it would. And then I would think about other possibilities and then it would be a whole big thing. Yeah. But I didn't try it because I knew it wouldn't come out the way I... I had envisioned it in my mind. So that's one thing where, uh, because of my overuse or my abuse of NI, uh, I was much more hesitant to talk to females, I guess. That's funny, and that goes down into like the confidence thing. So earlier, right yeah. before the video, David was talking about confidence. I think you could, you should probably like talk about that. Oh man, that whole journey of confidence. Whole, I mean, you don't have to say the whole journey, you know, whatever you feel is necessary. I, did, I mean, eventually I, I, I just kind of, I faked it till I made it kind of thing. And that's when I told you about the whole hologram. I forgot the exact metaphor that I used. Yeah. But it was something like, you said, you said that about me. I, I don't know. We were talking about it. I don't remember yeah. the exact conversation. Yeah. It was because I was going up to preach and then you were like, you know what I realized about you? use your confidence as a hologram where you come off a lot more confident than you really are so then even like going off of that and going off of what david just said but as i got older i never really had trouble talking to girls or approaching them and i think that's because david's ni is like dominant and like stronger but my ni is like serving fe so if anything if ni is in the co-pilot it's telling fe what exactly to do which FE is already driving, as opposed to with David, who would have FE in the co-pilot, and it's kind of telling NI what to do in a yeah, way. It's weaker. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like that's just what it is. It's yeah, just, I, it's I not guess as strong so. as dominant FI. I mean FE. FE. Okay, yeah, now it makes sense. Like me, I would always already like David said that he would imagine what's gonna happen or whatever. I only had to imagine like a little bit. <laughs> and then I would play the rest <laughs> off. And I think I think that's because my SE is tertiary. Yeah. So I would just go forth and I'm confident and I know how to like if there's a curveball that's thrown at me, I know how to like, you know, finesse around it. As opposed to David, his SE is like uh his last function. So 
if something in the plan doesn't go well, he's like, oh, malfunction, malfunction, <laughs> malfunction. Because he, his TI is tertiary, so that's the that's where he's supposed to be logically thinking of stuff. So I guess that's that's where it comes to like confidence when it talks to when it comes to like talking to girls. But then I'm pretty sure that that TI SE flip for us is different. Like, so I might be more confident when it comes to like speaking to people or getting on camera or going up stage or whatever. But you having TI as a tertiary, you're probably more confident when it comes to like talking about logical stuff. Actually, you're you're not wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you're not wrong. Even for me doing these YouTube videos and everything, I'm a lot. I, it took me a long time to finally be like, okay, I think I know enough to go up there and people be able to be like, he knows what he's talking about, as opposed to like someone like David who has stronger TI, then he'll grasp the subject deeper and quicker and they'll have the logical capacity to be able to break things down a lot more quickly than I would have been able to. Hmm. That's actually a good summation of like everything. Yeah, so definitely confidence is something that we both struggle with. But in but different areas. In different areas, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's what makes us unique. I suppose it does. Next thing. <laughs> so going off of confidence, um, as an ENFJ, um, we're going to talk about image now. And being an FE dom, so extroverted feeling um, is my dominant function, I've found that image is something that's very important to me. Like, um, in one of these videos, and I'm going to actually put the little eye thing up there for you guys to see it. Um, <laughs> is referencing a video where she's talking about the ENFJs and INFJs, I believe, and she talks about the emotional pivot, which is where we ENFJs, in short, we're great at getting other people to talk about themselves and, you know, like, open up and everything, but then when they try to get us to, like, open up a lot about, like, our inner struggles or whatever, then we kind of, like, pivot like oh and we shift the attention somewhere else or like kind of like maneuver around the question like INFJs do that I do that all the time people get mad at me for that I, I do that <laughs> all the time especially as uh, especially as like somebody who's usually like speaking in front of people and everything because you know our image is something like if it's like one-on-one -on -one conversation I don't really mind because I'm controlling it but like if I'm in front of like a whole bunch of people it's like well I could say this struggle or I could say this but then while these people are like respecting me for it and saying like where my sincerity is, these people are probably thinking something else. Um, so that's something that as an uh, NFJ male I also struggle with. And then also pertaining to image, one thing that I've realized about myself, and by the way, I've been working on the emotional pivot part and I think I've been a lot better. I, I'm sure you guys can see from my videos that I've been like a lot more um, open and vulnerable. Um, not completely, but yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but another thing that I really struggle with, like when it comes to like image, and one thing that I've realized by myself is that I like to, not in a controlling way, but I enjoy being respected and like kind of like top rank. So not in a way where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm powerful, I'm taking control of like the whole atmosphere, but more is in the sense of if I'm gonna speak, I don't want anybody to have in their mind like, why is this guy talking? Like, what, what is he about to say? You know, something like that. I like to have the respect that I have. So when it comes to image, uh, that's something that I definitely struggle with. Um, I like to be at the top. I like to be respected by everyone. And if I'm in an environment where I feel like not everybody's respecting me or I don't have like everyone's respect, um, then I feel uncomfortable. I feel like, dang, well, I just never like to feel as if I'm not welcomed I'm not respected or I, I'm not I'm not looked up to in a way you know I like the idea of oh when Denzel speaks I want to listen because he doesn't just have like something stupid to say I don't like just speaking to fill the air so that's I guess that's kind of like my thing on image and I feel like um, as an NFJ male like NFJ females they probably don't really like deal with that especially like INFJs who aren't really usually trying to be you know like at the top or like like out there <clears throat> like I've found that I've had a lot of leadership roles in my life because I guess people sort of respect me but that's only I feel like that's part of the observation 
uh, of an eye in terms of like we only we observe first, then we speak and input, then we recluse back to ourselves, and then we just go through the whole cycle again. So yeah, like by being careful about what you say, people tend to be more observant or like they pay attention to what you say more because you don't speak a lot at all. Yeah, and because of that, I feel like I and gaining perspective, just listening first. I feel like people tend to respect that. So like I've gained a lot of respect amongst a lot of people just for being like authentic and listening first and trying to like be observant uh, of the people specifically around me. Um, and that's somehow, funny because that's usually how I gain my status. Mm. Like I, I'm usually. I'm actually very, very quiet when I come into like new places and everything and I don't really like speak much and then when I finally do speak, I'm thinking like, okay, how is this, I'm predicting how is it going to be received by the group? Is it going to rack up my respect points or is it going to tear it down? If it's going to rack it up, then I'm going to go ahead and say it. If it's going to tear it down or if it's going to keep it stagnant, then, and that's, that's the key thing. If it's going to either tear it down or keep it stagnant, then I just don't say it. So That's like the thing it's with me, I see a like, lot of things that are like keep it stagnant or tear it down. Yeah. I see different things that like would cause would cause a whole bunch of like discourse and stuff. So I'm just like, you know what? Let me relax and observe and learn first before I act on, act upon what I've learned. Type yeah. Thing. And but yeah, back to the point. I've I've had a lot of leadership roles. Like I've had I've been president of one group. I've been <clears throat> like a, a small group leader before. I've I've been in. in positions of leadership in which I have to think about the whole group like, as a whole but I've never quite liked it in the terms of because of the responsibility that's what I think of most I don't think of like all of like the, the perks or whatever or just being respected as much simply because I'm worried too worried about the responsibility and things going well that I'm not even thinking about like the position of power that I'm in because it's more of like a a service type thing and I don't like a, a lot of men stereotypically well stereotypical male is usually man who's in charge yeah. but I don't necessarily like that one because I don't like being a dictator of sorts which is usually attributed to like being a, a leader of anything and I don't like having the burden of having everyone else's like well-being in any sense being placed upon me, yeah. and of course, uncomfortability not with FE as an auxiliary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of that course, makes I'm, not, a lot of I'm sense. not the only one. Yeah, who's no, like yeah. In the leadership position, but I know, like, if I'm going to be the figurehead, I'm going to. It's, a lot it's of, very. It's a big responsibility. Yeah, and that's what yeah, I'm thinking. Like, I'm thinking about the up. weight exactly. No, I totally understand that. So, and then like, me as an ENFJ, <clears throat> I have like so FE is my dominant function, as I said, and. First of all, I'd, I'd like, in the most humble way, I'd say that like, I'm usually, I never aim to be the leader. I never do that. In fact, one thing that I actually enjoy doing is being naturally voted the leader. So, and this happens a lot. Like very often people will, like think and like, or like we're trying to decide a leader and I'll even like recommend somebody else. But then if, eventually like sometimes like things just come back like hey Denzel I think that you should be leader and everyone like votes on it and I'm like okay cool and while I'm leader I guess this is where being an FE dominant comes in handy because as an ENFJ having FE is a dominant function I'm I FE is all about like creating harmony social dynamics how is pe how are people gonna work together um, getting everybody's needs met um, having everybody on my social radar, you know, like reading like who is sad versus who's angry versus how, how, how everybody's feeling. So naturally when I'm in a leadership position, then I begin to, I keep everybody on my radar like, okay, are you sure that you're happy with this position? Are you sure that you want to do this? What is going to be the most effective thing for everyone? And by the end of the day, all of my decisions, since they so heavily consider everyone's opinions and perspectives and all of that, then by the end of the day, when I make that final decision or when I make those calls, then naturally everyone's on board or at the least, I'd say like maybe like 98% of people are on board and um, we're able to carry it out happily. But if I feel like not everybody's like happy with the decision, then I back up. 
I'm like, all right, then we're not going to do this. And I guess that's where, like, becoming a feeler is also bad because a TE user, if they believe that this is what is the most logical thing to do, even though everybody else's feelings are going to get hurt or they're not really, like, comfortable with it, they're going to enforce it anyway. But then for me, even if I believe that this is the most logical and best thing to do, because TI is still in my function stack, so I still know what the logical thing is to do most of the time. I'm just not as comfortable carrying it out if it conflicts with the harmony of everyone. If saying this information is going to conflict with the harmony of everyone, then I'm like, mm, maybe I should say it more tactfully or just try and keep that information to myself and work on it um, in a different way, like by myself without disrupting the harmony. So yeah, I guess, that, I guess that's something about me, um, pertaining to what you just said with image. And then the uh, other thing I wanted to say pertaining to FE, I think this is the biggest thing for being an NFJ male, especially an FE Dom. When I first found out that I'm a feeler, I didn't like that. <laughs> Everyone sees men as these brolic <laughs> uh, type of people who like, they don't cry and you know, they, they don't, their emotions, what the heck is that? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. And I, I'm not, I'm not like that. Um, I'm not soft, but I'm also not like, somebody who's just like really like cold and like not like i'm actually very emotionally intelligent um and i think that's something that people should know about nfj males there's a difference between fe and fi so like just because you're a feeler does not mean necessarily that you're like a crybaby or whatever and i'm not even saying that fi users are but one thing that i've observed is that fe users especially like looking at myself I very, very, very rarely cry when it comes to my own feelings because I'm so out of tune with my own feelings. I'm more in tune with everybody else's. In saying that, the, the, the best time to see me cry, tear up, whatever, is when I'm watching a movie, <laughs> when I'm watching a show, or when I'm like counseling someone and I'm, and I'm empathizing with them. Me being an empath, um, I naturally absorb other people's feelings and NI plus FE puts me in that position. And so then I absorb all of their feelings and sometimes it's to the point where, or oftentimes it's to the point where I can't even tell the difference between their feelings and my own feelings. And so next thing you know, I'm crying because I put myself in that person's position. I'm tearing up because this person who's telling me their story about how their father has cancer now and all of that. I'm really empathizing with that person even if I don't know their father. But you will not catch me like, you know, crying because of um I can't even think of an example, but something I know that happened to you personally. Yeah, something that happened to me personally. I I don't cry about stuff like that. I mainly I get soft and crying or whatever when I'm empathizing with others. And I think that that's also something that's really interesting because Jesus who's most likely an INFJ according to the Bible, or like how he's portrayed in the Bible and everything. Yeah, he only cried. <laughs> and what, the one verse where it says Jesus wept was due to his friend Lazarus dying. And his mother, Lazarus's mother, was basically like, yeah, you're too late. He already died. If you were here, then you would have been able to help. Jesus, that was the only time recorded that Jesus actually like wept. But other than that, he didn't really like cry like, oh my gosh, I, you know, and I'm not saying I'm not picking on FI users when I say this, but I know a ton of FI users, like a ton, Jamila, Mandy, shout out to y'all, uh, shoot, Tay, uh, Kylisa, shout out to y'all too, who all of them have admitted to me laughing like, oh yeah, you know, I, I cry a lot, mainly the girls, Tay, I don't, I don't think they cries a lot, but he does get in his feelings oftentimes. And it's because they're so in tune with their inner feelings that if they're sad, they're feeling it. And of course, you know, they're going to come out. So Jamila would be like, yeah, I cry like all the time. I probably cry like, you know, three times a week. Mandy's like, yeah, me too. Jamila's ISFP. Mandy's INFP. Kylisa's always crying. <laughs> and I feel like maybe if I was that in tune with my own feelings, if I had FI, I would cry a lot too. But I'm more prone to cry for other people. And so that's... That's a big thing that I've seen with um, FE. Like, just because I'm a feeler doesn't mean that I cry all the time. And even for feelers who do cry, it depends on what it is. Because I feel like FI users don't usually cry. 
for like other people. Not that they don't, but it's more. They're more prone to cry for the like their own feelings. I don't feel. cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. This dude's father died, and his he did mother. not. Cry. And his mother died. He's freaking Spider Man. <laughs> he did not cry. I don't like to. I think it's because of my NIT. I do. I think so too. I think so. But I don't, I have cried, but it's very, very, it's like extremely rare. It's like, I can literally count on my fingers how many times I've cried that I can, I, that I can remember. I would say about like maybe three or four times, but it's been like years. Been, I would say that's in the span of like seven or eight years. And I, I can s totally see the Oprah versus, what, what's, what's a popular INFJ that we could mention? Maybe even like JK Rowling, where like, yeah, like, Oprah, when you see her like talking to people and they're se they're telling their stories, and Oprah's just like, like really paying attention, and like tears are in her eyes. That's me. <laughs> like I'm feeling everything the person is feeling, and I it's because of that F E N I S E. And type in mind.com for you um, ENFJs. If you read that, that's like the best ENFJ description there is out there. And if you read about N I over there, it explains how we really feel other people's emotions in that sense because of like all the strong FE, the strong NI, and the strong SE just like all coming together as opposed to like INFJs, they can feel the emotions but because their TI is a lot stronger, it's able to dissect like wait a minute, this is your emotions and these are my emotions. So yeah, I'm empathizing with you and I feel your pain and all of that but you're not really gonna like get to me like that heavily. That's even if only if it makes sense. If it makes logical sense in our minds, where we can actually see where a person is coming from. It's like watching those movies where like the villain is like completely horrible, but they have a justified reason for doing that. That's like everybody in an INFJ is like, well, for me personally. That's how I see everything in, in the sense of, I may not agree with everything that you may be feeling. However, I can completely understand it because I see your thought process throughout the whole story that you've been telling me yeah that's it's funny because for me it doesn't really have to make like <laughs> logical <laughs> sense you just understand yeah naturally. it's like yeah. dang like i i like yeah this doesn't make sense to me but i feel your emotion i feel mm -hmm. how much this is hurting me this is hurting you and now it's hurting me too and then it gets to a point where it's like so when i'm leader of a situ like of a pack and there's one person who's like really sad while all other 25 people are really happy <laughs> then that person is like pinching me basically and I'm feeling their emotions so heavily and now it gets to the point, I mentioned this in my um, ENFJ problems, paradoxes and patches video where it's like now I'm at a point now where it's like hey, either we have to fix this problem, you have to vent to me, you have to talk to me about it so that we can both stop suffering from your pain or I'm gonna have to send you home so that I can stop <laughs> suffering. <laughs> so FE, selfish, and selfless at the same time, paradoxically. But um, yeah, that was that was my thing about being an NFJ male. Like you know, like most males are known to like not really be emotionally intelligent, empathetic, you know, etc. And I guess like like David said, like as an INFJ, that's not something that he really like relates to in that sense. But then at the same time, it also goes with the whole confidence thing, like. Most men are also known to be like, hey, I'm confident to go and talk to that girl. I'm confident to go do that, which I am. But then David's like, I'm a shy back. This is what's going to so, happen if I go and do that. Exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's something that I would definitely like chalk up for the NFJs, males. Yeah. Another thing with FE is compliments, especially from us ENFJs. Um, so in the description, you'll see two different links. One talking about the male ENFJ, like understanding the male ENFJ, and one talking about understanding the complexities of the male INFJ. And I highly recommend that you read both links. Um, it's from personalitygrowth.com, great site. And they speak a lot on the flirting, the compliments that come from NFJs. And especially, I remember like from my, the article about the ENFJ one, what they said about compliments and flirting is like spot on. Like, I, I recall in Zootopia how Judy Hopps was often like, I like your shirt, I like this, I like that. And of course she's not like flirting, but she, like as an F.E. Dom, we like to make other people feel good about themselves. And especially when you couple that with N.I. and you start to grow, 
and him already like leading with NI, then and you're about to talk about this as well, but like for me, like I I naturally just hand out compliments to people, whether you're a guy or a girl. Like, hey, I like your shirt. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Yo, I like your haircut, man. That's really cool. Like, oh, He's thanks, no problem. <laughs> you get a compliment. You get a compliment. <laughs> yes, you. You get a compliment. And they're all genuine. Let me say that. They are all genuine. I genuinely mean every single compliment that I say to people. Are you looking at me as if, like, that's no. not true? Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're Sorry. all genuine compliments. I promise. Um, but then, once I grow more depth with the person, and I, I find it funny because, like, I've been seeing myself, like, decrease maybe because now I'm growing more into my NI. Um, and David's about to speak on this, but now I found myself more of, like, just giving people a whole spiel, like, a whole paragraph. Like, yo, this is why I really like you, and it's really, like, a really deep thing, like, on people's birthdays. Like, if you mean, like, a lot to me, then I'll say this whole long thing that's very personalized to, you know, lift your spirits and make you feel, like, very special for that day. I'll take the time to do that. But, um, yeah, ENFJs are known to, like, just hand out compliments more. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Like more. Like, I, I usually, like... You're, I like, will, the reverse. <laughs> yeah, the reverse. Well, like, I, I will observe all the people he's giving compliments to. And he might be right, but I'll usually hone in on one person that I have a really good vibe with. And then I'll be able to list with detail all the things I like about them. Usually about their personality and how they do things and the way they think and... I'll highlight all of their greatest qualities to me that I've observed within that time span that he's <laughs> giving compliments to everybody and I'll be like, that's why I like you. And then I'll just let them go about their day. I won't expect anything really, it's just like, if it's a continuous thing that I'm doing, then of course I would like some, uh, like, uh, how do I say it? Reciprocation. Reciprocation. But it's not mandatory, it's just something I like to do. Yeah, same here. I don't really expect compliments back. I don't really want compliments back. I mean, they're nice, but I just, I literally just want to make people feel good about themselves because I know when people give me a compliment, like, yo, I really like your shirt or whatever like that, it makes me feel good. It boosts myself up for the day. And I guess guys, this is something that guys are not stereotypically known for doing as well. Unless it's like without some ulterior motive. Right. We just genuinely, as an NFJ, just genuinely like to make people feel good about themselves. And I feel like a lot of girls are not used to that. Or yes. Girls are guys, really. Oh my like, goodness. They're just like, people just expect, like, as soon as you say something nice to them, and you're just like, whatever, then they, they, they're they kind of weirded out by it. Like, what was that? I was at, to me at school. <laughs> this happened to me. At school one time, this happened like a couple years ago. I'm walking around campus, I'm getting off the bus. And this girl, she got off the sh uh, off the bus, and I was like, "Hey, I like your jersey." It was Allen Iverson. He's my all-time favorite basketball player. She turns around and she's like, I'm and then she just keeps on walking. I'm like, <laughs> first she of all, she was not though. she was not attractive to me. So I, I'm not trying to hit on you. I just I, I wasn't even talking about your butt or your face, anything. I'm just talking about your jersey. But you know, like. I guess just like David said, like mo it makes sense because most males they're saying these things to get like for an ulterior motive, um, as opposed to like NFJs. They're they're more like especially with the ENFJ, as David said, like we're more like vulnerable with handing out those compliments and all that. And INFJs are more afraid of rejection, yeah. so which goes back to why you guys are like more fearful of going to speak to girls. That happened to me a lot yeah. when I was younger. Like when I was younger, I was just like. Uh, I would have moments of that vulnerability in which I would like wear my heart on my sleeve and just like I would I would go to instead of writing poems for girls like this was a thing where I would like it wouldn't be multiple girls at once it would be like of course one girl at a time but it would yeah be, like, same a cycle <laughs> in which like I, I have would quite just, like, a few yeah. my best poems are the ones that I can't share with you guys I'm sorry <laughs> <sighs> but yeah there would be a lot of instances in which uh, I would say like middle school high school yeah. Where like I would like try and find an opening in which I could talk to a girl, and it would, I just get shut down, or I would be vulnerable with a girl I would be friends with, which is usually how I do things now, and I would get shut down to be just from different preferences. So from all that, I would like just basically shy away and like think at least seven steps ahead. At least seven. Yes, at least seven. <laughs> God. Through observation. 
and that that takes time, but it helped. It also helped me to like remain friends with the person to see whether or not I would actually want to pursue anything, <clears throat> or instead of just like jumping in and getting rejected again because that rejection. Once you get it, for me personally, I would go back to that scenario and think about the million different ways that a million different ways I, how I could have went about it to achieve a better result. That's where any comes in handy, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I feel like it's different because it was just like, if I had done it this way, then this would have happened, then this would have happened, this would have happened. That would have happened. caused a whole other change. Exactly. Yeah. God damn. Being yeah. y'all is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I just go with it and it usually works. <laughs> I can't finesse as well. That's just it. True. So, I know for, for me personally, as an INFJ, I do like to listen a lot, but more because I like to listen to stories in terms of like, I like listening to a person's journey. I don't listen to every detail. I don't like pay attention to specific like dates and times and all that other stuff. But I do pay attention to like a person's development or what they hold dear to them because that reveals more about their character, their identity. And that's more intriguing to me than anything else because that's who that person is and they're saying this is why and this is what's happened to me they're laying it out on the table for me to read so that person for lack of a better term becomes a good book i could say yeah yeah <laughs> speaking of stories i think i'll just tell like a very brief quick story um me and david go over to our aunt's house every sunday um, after church, it's not our real aunt, but you know, we call everybody auntie and uncle at our church because we're Africans. That's kind of what we do. It's a um, tribe. It's, it's a it's cultural a thing. And so we go over to our aunt's house after church, and we're like family. She usually makes food for us, all of that. We have good conversation. And one day we went over there, and she was like, Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Um, I wasn't able to cook yesterday because I was, you know, basically I had to like go to my mother's funeral. And, and I was like, oh, dang, well, you know, that's fine with me, you know, like, she said, but the Chinese will be here in, like, 20 minutes. So I was like, good, that gives us enough time to sit down and actually talk, because you're always using the excuse that, oh, I'm cooking, so I can't really sit down and, like, have dinner with you guys. And then she leaves the conversation up to me, David, and my sister, and whoever else is at the table, and she doesn't really engage in it. But this day, she didn't have an excuse because, you know, Chinese food was coming over. So I used that opportunity to basically open herself, uh, open up. So I threw a question out onto the table. I was like, so auntie, you know, me, David, and my older sister over here, we don't have kids, but you have plenty of kids. Plus you run a daycare. And I just want to know, how do you handle all these kids and you have all this patience and all of that? I'm telling and then, the whole story. I'm not saying all that. And then she, she basically went on to tell us like a whole story. Like from there, she went on to tell us a whole story about like how she grew up, her childhood, and a lot of things and most males stereotypically are known to like not really like listen much I know I know a lot of I'd say majority of the males that I know in my life they're not good listeners especially to long stories they they'll check out you know especially with today's social media scrolling Instagram you know they'll they'll somehow they just they just don't have the attention span for it um, I'm even amazed that you're still watching this video to be honest if you're a guy <laughs> but anyway <laughs> that day I sat down intently I empathized with her just and we all listened very intently to her whole story as she told and then at the end like I summarized what my thoughts were and what I thought she should do after absorbing like all of the information um, and I gave her my feedback on the story after she let everything out and I think that that defeats a stereotype for men when it comes to ENFJs because most men as I said they're known to like not really pay attention as much especially like STPs they're more aloof um, while NFJs are more like focused, they're more, they're great listeners because of that FE and that NI. And so that's something that I also like to throw in there. And the last thing that um, I would like to talk about pertaining to FE and NI is that we are more concerned, like what David said, we are more concerned about you as a person. Like to us, what's important is not your favorite color, or you know like 
honestly, your birthday. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I might remember your birthday. I, I, I might remember your birthday, but if we're being totally honest, I'm terrible with birthdays. I actually did not remember my mom's birthday until like the 18th, but until I became 18 or 19. Like I always, I never forgot it, but I just always forget the date. I just always remember like the month and around the time, like it's, is it October 15, 16, 17, or 18, or 19? And when it gets around that time, then you know somebody like remind me, I'm like oh, okay, I know the SFJs are really good with remembering birthdays. You know that SI is good, but NI users like NFJs, we're more in, we're more about like who you are as a person. What's important to us is like who you are, your identity. And one thing that I found funny was that Jamila when I was sort of like trying to get with her and all of that, she said that the one thing that really bothered her about me when I was trying to pursue her, when I was trying to win her over, was that I never asked her questions such as like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite cereal? You know, stuff like that. We didn't know anything about MBTI back then, but later on we learned that, oh, it's because you're an NI user, um, and I'll probably link the video that they actually explain this in the description as well. But he was talking about how, like, you know, NI users, like, we don't care for those details, as David said. We're more, we're more of like, okay, yeah, that's nice that your favorite color is orange. Oh, that's nice that, you know, your birthday is on this day. Oh, great, you're an Aquarius. That's, that's What's great. What's your purpose? But who are you? Who <laughs> is Katie? Who is Keandra? Who is Jamila? You know, who is Kylisa? Like, who are you as a person? Not what your things are. They're like, not what are your favorite whatevers, you know, not what your favorite candy is, unless if there's symbolism behind it. So, I might ask you, like, what your favorite color is. Like, if you ask me what my favorite color is, I'll tell you it's red because I like leadership. And I've always seen the Red Ranger uh, as a leader. I've always seen, you know, the red color on the top of the rainbow as the first one you know it's just a bold color so there's a symbol behind it which tells you about me but if you're just telling me fun facts about you I'm way less prone to actually pay attention to that and keep it in mind not because I don't really like care but kind of because I don't really like care unless if I know that it means <laughs> a lot to you then I'm gonna remember somebody got mad at me because I did not remember the city that they lived in I don't really care if y'all remember which city I live in but because this person got upset about that and she is an SFJ, then I was like, hmm, you know what? I'm going to try and remember which city this person lives in because now I know it's important to you. And that says something about who you are as a person, that something like this is important to you. So now I'm going to remember it. So I guess in a way that kind of affirms a male stereotype while also disaffirming it because like most males really don't care about like stereotypically don't really care about like anything or they're known like that. While as for us, it's like, no, we're just selectively caring and we want to go deeper. And being feelers, we want that deep connection with you. We want that deep dive into who you are, into your mind, into your personality. And that's not something that most males are known for because that's a very vulnerable state. That's a very vulnerable ability. And I feel like as NFJs, that could be seen as like feminine because you know we're we're not necessarily wearing our hearts on our sleeves but we're trying to dive into your heart like in a more strategic and empathetic type of fashion so that's something that i'd like to say about effie and, and i and now i'm going to stop talking i'll pass it over to david yes i think as an infj or an nfj in general we definitely are people pleasers in terms of satisfying another person and what I mean by that is, if a person is close to us, because this, this doesn't apply to everyone, but if a person is close to us and we value that person, which of course we will if we have a relationship with that person, then we're going to do whatever is necessary in order to keep that person happy. Now, this doesn't mean like we'll go above and beyond, but we'll do everything within our means to get that person uh, satisfied. Uh, so that may mean like, <clears throat> if we're gonna dive into love languages, that may mean just like sacrificing our own expression of love and accommodating with that person and trying to like uh, assimilate to how they receive love. So if a person likes a lot of encouragement, we excel at that. We can we can give you, we, we can talk to you. Yes, <laughs> so head up, girl. We can talk to you <laughs> for quality time. We can also give you that. Uh, 
whatever it may be, it, whether it's gift giving or like just uh, being there or acts of service, even, then it might push us to uh, to engage in that behavior, especially especially if we receive encouragement. If I receive encouragement from somebody, my efforts double t like times ten, simply because I know that that's what that per that's what that person is. That's what makes that person happy, and that's what they appreciate. So if I'm if they tell me that that's what they appreciate about me, of course I'm going to double my efforts in that area. But that requires communication, which is why NFJs like to listen because we're trying to tap into who you are so that we can satisfy and keep harmony between the two of us. That is the purpose of it. The sole purpose of not of listening is not just so we can understand you, which, which is a huge part of it. It's more so so that we can adapt to who you are and therefore satisfy you and have a better relationship with you. And that in a sense, in the whole sense actually, is people pleasing. Now that can be dangerous if it's for just about anybody or if the relationship between you and that person is not clarified and you value them more than they value you. But in a relationship where everything is equal and both people are valued within that relationship, then I don't see anything wrong with it personally. That's true. Um, did you want to talk about that? No, I don't think I have anything on that. Okay. Yeah. Another thing is, um... Masculinity is usually associated... Masculinity is usually associated with, like, um... Dominating. We talked about that before, but in terms of like, so for example, sports is hugely like it's very stereotypical for a male to be involved in sports. Growing up, I didn't like sports at all, at all. Uh, my dad liked a lot of basketball. He liked a lot of baseball and stuff like that. I did always love football, only because I liked playing it more, and just because I liked to run. So football and track were certain, certain things that I tried out, but other than that. I didn't really have a close affinity towards sports and really being outdoors even. I don't like hiking, I don't like, I, I like long walks, that, that's different. But <laughs> uh, in terms of like actively engaging in competition, I don't really like it too much unless it's maybe chess. Uh, chess is like more of like a strategic, it's solely based on your strategy and trying to, yes, conquer the other uh, the opponent, but at the same time, it's not necessarily aggressive in the same sense that uh, more contact sports are uh, are aggressive in uh, in terms of it's more of like a battle of the minds, which makes a person who with Dom and I Dom is. It's a very comfortable, comfortable place to be because that's where we're at anyway. Um, but yeah, we're really dark. <laughs> <laughs> Should have done this from the beginning, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, so lastly, I would say that uh, NFJs are very nurturing in the sense that a lot, <clears throat> us both actually, we've got actually gotten a lot of like uh, comments where people say, "Oh, we're we're dads." Now, this is different for male INFJs because I feel like female INFJs are definitely more nurturing and because it's more socially acceptable or at least more stereotypical for a female to be more nurturing than a male. But I do feel like this comes out in males just as much. However, it's, it appears differently because the way a dad nurtures his child is much different from when a mother nurtures her child. Um, so, of course, we show that type of compassion and consideration for others much differently than a female would because uh, we're not females. <laughs> so, plain and simple. Um, but I think it comes out in trying to make sure someone is okay, mainly, like not just okay physically, but also okay emotionally, mentally, because those are the type okay? of things. <laughs> no, no. Or we monitor behavior. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> like we may monitor behavior and say and try and like diagnose somebody and see how that um, dictates their mindset at the time. Like for example, your favorite guy in the whole world, uh, Reddington, he does this all the time. Reddington. In, 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 whereas he may, like forget, in the last episode we watched, the guy had a lot of tattoos and he related that to how <laughs> the guy was trying to hide a whole bunch of insecurities within himself 
-hmm. And he went into a whole bunch of different, he went into a plethora of things, and the guy was just a dude. I just like tattoos. <laughs> That's literally me. Like, hmm. so why? Or, uh, why is the uh, best question in the world? Can we talk about why? <laughs> just because why? That's David's favorite question. It's my favorite word. It's my favorite letter. It's my favorite everything. Just Jamila why? just called and said, "Oh, tell David that I, I prayed for him today." <laughs> If it were me, I would have been like, oh, thank you, because naturally, I just assume, like, I guess that's where my NI and your NI also differ, because your your TI is also higher, so maybe that's another thing, but I just actually, like, I don't ask why, like, that much, because I just naturally assume already correctly, like, what it is, but then David, I guess he has to, like, confirm that, so he's like, why? I said, oh, so it did touch me. Yeah, you did, yeah, <laughs> it did touch me. The oh. first thing out of my mouth was why. Yeah. Because I wanted to know her mindset behind the whole. And she told me. And then I said, oh, thank you. Yeah. But why is definitely a big question that we like to ask a lot. We, we like to ask a lot of <clears throat> what is going on behind the curtains type of thing. And then just going back to the whole nurturing um, aspect. Yeah, definitely. I Mufasa is an ENFJ. And at school, a lot of my friends call me... Mufasa, oftentimes. Um, Jamila calls me that, Tay calls me that, Kailissa calls me that, Eliana calls me that. A lot of people call me Mufasa. I don't, I don't even try to like be a father or whatever, but I think it's also because I hang out with all FI users who ironically don't know what they want. <laughs> and so I have to decide what we're gonna do next. And I like, all right, come on guys, let's go, let's go children, you know. There was literally a time where we left the movie theater and I said, I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna let everybody decide what we're gonna do next. And I watched for about four minutes as they sat around like, I don't know, I don't know what we do next. And then they all just look at me and I'm like, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> and, but yeah, we're, we're very like nurturing the sense of like, if I see something, like something's not right with you, if David sees something's not right with you, we're gonna try and like go forth and like really like press into what that is, as opposed to like most guys. Which I guess is kind of like going against the whole father thing but fathers mainly want to do this for their children and I guess like for NFJs we're just like this for all everyone. the time <laughs> yeah so but yeah most guys are kind of like oh emotions kind of like steer away from that whereas most like FE is really good with emotional management of other people so yeah that's that's where nurturing comes into the NFJ Thanks for watching. Um, this has been a spiel from an ENFJ and an INFJ on how it's like to be an NFJ male in this world of stereotypical male stereotypes. <laughs> Hope that you enjoyed it and make sure to leave comments, questions, whatever, even suggestions on videos that me and David should make. Check out the description for these links. Um, they'll have a lot more information on all of that. And also, I actually might be starting up a YouTube channel, or at least a, a way for me to express some of my thoughts. It's not going to be anything as ex as extensive as this, at least not yet. However, it's just a way for me to dump some creative stuff as well as talk about some stuff. Uh, you can catch that at Creative Kwamis, where I'll just be dumping a whole bunch of thoughts. Well, basically the setup of the video will be, you'll watch me draw, but while I'm drawing, I'll be talking about MTI stuff, I'll be talking about stuff that's on my mind. Uh, just a few videos here and there, yes, but go ahead and check it out. K-R-E-A-T-I-V-E. -E. Kwame's K-W-E, K-W-A-M-E-S. Yeah, Creative Kwame's um, on YouTube. Yes. And check out his Instagram. Great Instagram channel. I-N-D-A-V-I-D-U-A-L-L-S. Yeah, that. Same with... Um, Twitter as well. That's yes. a nice place for him to dump his thoughts and everything. It smells like weed. We gotta get out of it's here. The Bronx, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching again. Done.